All right. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to IGTV. On the on the line with us right now is Caitlin Kindenberg from MSA Security. Uh, we've got the significant impact of uh, recent Al Qaeda deaths and arrests, and uh, this is uh, on the tenth year anniversary of nine eleven. So, Caitlin, why don't you take it away? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Good morning. I'm Caitlin Kindenberg, an intelligence analyst at MSA Security. Uh, so it's now been 10 years since Al-Qaeda attacked the United States on September 11, 2001. And since then, Al-Qaeda has been incapable of staging another successful, large-scale attack on the U.S. homeland. Al-Qaeda's regional affiliates seem to be emerging as an even larger threat to U.S. national security than Al-Qaeda Central, based in Pakistan. Part of what has led to the relatively weakened state of the Al-Qaeda network has been the deaths of some key Al-Qaeda operatives including, of course, its leader, Osama bin Laden. Several senior al-Qaeda members have been killed in recent months, and each death has had an impact on al-Qaeda to some degree. Additionally, three top al-Qaeda operatives were just recently arrested by Pakistani authorities. These arrests will likely have their own effects on the network as well. Uh, today I'd like to discuss what we at MSA Security assess to be the short-term impacts of each of the deaths and arrests on the overall al-Qaeda network. Since I already provided a brief of our analysis of bin Laden's death in a previous presentation on IGTV, today's brief will mainly focus on the events that occurred after bin Laden's death on May 2nd. I will discuss the events in chronological order to provide a better understanding of how each has impacted Al-Qaeda. So about a month after bin Laden's death, the Pakistani militant leader Ilyas Kashmiri was reportedly killed on June 3rd by an American drone strike in the South Waziristan tribal region of Pakistan. According to U.S. intelligence counterterrorism officials, Kashmiri was one of the most dangerous and most wanted leaders in Pakistan due to his training skills, commando experience, and strategic aspirations to target the West. For those reasons, he was initially considered the dark horse in the running, uh, in, in the running to succeed bin Laden. Uh, Kashmiri was the leader of a group called Harakat ul Jihad Islami, which formed a close relationship with Al-Qaeda. It is even said that Kashmiri had direct links to Osama bin Laden. He was recently linked to the 2010 European terror plot, which called for Mumbai-style commando attacks throughout major European cities. So given Kashmiri's prominence and his connection to plots targeting the West, his death was assessed to have been a major blow to the Al-Qaeda network. He had been chosen as bin Laden, if he had been chosen as bin Laden's successor, he could have further strengthened the ties between the Pakistan-based jihadist groups in Al-Qaeda, like lashkar e taiba and the Pakistani Taliban. Once he was essentially crossed off the list, this provided an opportunity for Ayman al-Zawahiri to consolidate power while maintaining a low profile. And um, it was finally announced on June 16th that Zawahiri was the new Al-Qaeda leader. Uh, shortly following Kashmiri's death, it was announced that a top Al-Qaeda operative in Africa named Fazul Abdullah Mohammed was killed by Somali forces in Mogadishu in early June. Fazul Mohammed was one of Africa's most wanted terrorists, mainly due to his suspected involvement in the 1998 embassy bombings, which killed 225 people. American officials also believe that he was involved in attacks on an Israel-owned hotel and airliner in Kenya in 2002. A U.S.-led airstrike in Somalia failed to kill him back in 2007. And in that same year, Mohammed was added to a list created by the United Nations Security Council of 25 al-Qaeda operatives subject to sanctions. Given his prominence in plots that have killed many within Africa, his death was also considered a significant blow to the al-Qaeda organization. Now, the most recent al-Qaeda death occurred on August 22nd when Atiya Abd al-Rahman was killed by a drone strike in the mountains of Pakistan. Rahman is a Libyan who had taken over as Al-Qaeda's operational leader within the last year before becoming second in command to the group's new leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Recently, Rahman and Zawahiri had allegedly developed a plan to rebuild Al-Qaeda. Their goal was to reorganize relationships with the network's affiliated groups, rebrand Al-Qaeda's message to expand its base, and to take advantage of the recent events in the Arab world. Rahman had been playing an increasingly operational role within Al-Qaeda in recent years. American intelligence officials say that he was in frequent contact with bin Laden before his death earlier this year. 
Uh, intelligence gathered from the raid on bin Laden's compound revealed that Ramon passed along bin Laden's instructions to al-Qaeda operatives around the world. Several reports indicate that the European terror plot, which I briefly mentioned earlier, was approved by bin Laden through communications with Rahman. Rahman was also linked to a 2008 bomb plot targeting the Long Island Railroad. The death of Atiyah Abdul Rahman served as another significant blow to the Al-Qaeda network. Intelligence officials assessed that Rahman's death may harm Ayman al-Zawahiri's ability to communicate with and gain full control of the Al-Qaeda network, which would impact Al-Qaeda's relations with its regional affiliates. With the loss of their second-in-command, Al-Qaeda again has a weakened leadership. And without this strong leadership, it will be more difficult for the group to operate in a covert manner and plan future attacks. Now, apart from the deaths of prominent Al-Qaeda figures, the recent arrests of Al-Qaeda members in Pakistan will also likely impact Al-Qaeda operations. The most prominent of these arrests is that of Yunus al Muratani, whose position within Al-Qaeda appears to have grown within the last two years. Some reports say that al Muratani had reached out to Osama bin Laden through Atiyah Abdul Rahman, requesting to establish an Al-Qaeda cell in Germany. An announcement released by Pakistani authorities last Monday stated that al Muratani was tasked personally by Osama bin Laden to focus on hitting targets of economic importance within the United States to America, Europe, and Australia. He is thought to have taken charge of a group of German jihadists in March 2000. 10. Uh, additionally, he is said to have been involved with planning the European terror plot as well. His arrest serves as another significant blow to Al-Qaeda's ability to launch or export terrorist operations from the, tri from the tribal areas of Pakistan. While Al-Qaeda Central may have lost its footing, at least for the time being, we continue to see threats emerging from its regional affiliates, including Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and Yemen, Somalia's Al-Shabaab, and the Pakistani Taliban. We also continue to assess that lone wolf operatives are the largest threat to U.S. national security. This is based on what we've seen in the most recent terror-related plots or incidents. While lone wolves tend to be less sophisticated in their methods and abilities as they attempt to carry out individual attacks, these types of operatives are much more difficult to detect and disrupt. The loss of these senior Al-Qaeda members may only provide an impetus for these lone wolves or affiliated groups to attack the United States or Western interests. We've already seen attacks within Pakistan from the Pakistani Taliban to avenge bin Laden's death, some of which have targeted Americans. And also in direct response to the arrest of al Muratani, the Pakistani Taliban carried out two suicide bombings targeting Pakistan's frontier corps in Quetta. The attack killed at least 24 people on September 7th. So we see that in their own ways, the deaths of Kashmiri, Mohammed, and al Rahman, along with the arrest of Yunus al Muratani, have each had an impact on the Al-Qaeda network. The United States and its partners continue to target top Al-Qaeda operatives, which is definitely weakening the terrorist network. However, with each individual essentially knocked out of the picture, we see others moving up within the ranks. Uh, so we're seeing a new difference a new generation within Al-Qaeda leadership, and we have yet to see what these long-term impacts will be. Okay, so that, so that's the report, huh? Hey, you know, um, I'm I'm interested, uh, you know, when you when you're going over all this, Caitlin. You know, mm -hmm. I think we've definitely disrupted the uh, the terrorist networks. There's, I don't think there's any any question about that at all. Um, do you, you know, does MSA really think that we've put a dent in these people or stopped it in any way? I mean, disruption. Yeah. Yeah, you just spelled out how we've disrupted it. We've done a wonderful job of doing that. But this is like the, uh, you know, the worm. You cut off a head, another one grows. So. Well, that's, that's exactly it. We definitely don't think this is a stop to Al-Qaeda at all. Um, I mean, we, do, we continue to see the threats from the affiliated groups, but we can't count Al-Qaeda Central out. Uh, as I said, that as soon as somebody's out, someone else moves up. So um, I think we're definitely going to see what the long-term impacts will be soon enough now with these people that were all uh were all killed were uh out as in uh with al zwahiri do they all have tie backs to the united states um these ones no um kashmiri he's from pakistan al rahman is a uh, libyan and al Muratani, he is um 
he's from Mauritania. So they're not American citizens. Uh, they haven't lived in America. So, I mean, you still have Adam Gadon, who did live in the United States, right. who is part of Al-Qaeda. Um, you still have some Americans that are in other groups, like uh, we have, what's his name? I'm sorry, Omar Hamani, he's, uh, he's in Somalia with Al-Shabaab. So we definitely see Americans um, like with links to these groups um, playing key roles, actually. Yeah, like yeah, Amar no, that's a, that's, and a, that's so the part that really scares me. These are things that need me. to worry about. Yeah, that that's that's. Uh, sorry, I was stepping over you there. I'm, my apologies. Uh, that's that's the part that really scares me. Where we've got these American citizens that have given up their, you know, sort of like their their rights and their privileges here in the United States to go mm -hmm. live in the desert and take on leadership posts with these with these groups. That's absolutely amazing. All right, um, Caitlin, excellent job. Uh, we we'll look you. forward to seeing you next month. And uh, certainly, if there's anything else that comes across the wire, uh, let us know. All okay, right, thank take you care very now. Much. Right, bye bye.